brought to you by L&M, the modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Coffee started. Will you, Chester? I'll unsettle the horses. Yes, sir. What? It's Tover, Matt. Van Tover. Oh, hello, Van. I didn't recognize you there in the dark. I've been waiting for you, Matt. I wanted to talk to you. Well? Alone, if it's all the same. No offense, Chester. You old none took, Mr. Tover. I was just going on in and make some coffee anyhow. I'll make us all some while I'm at it. Why didn't you wait inside, Van? The office is open. I did for a while, but just couldn't stay set. And I guess you have got something on your mind. Matt, you know a lot about me. You know I tore around when I was younger before I met Edna and we got married and the kid come. Yeah, like most men, Van. No, that, that ain't what I mean exactly. I mean, I never quite got on the wrong side of the law, but I pretty near did a few times. Well, well, I was mighty handy with a gun, Matt. And I was too quick to use one a lot of times. Sure, it was always self-defense, but... What do you got, Matt, Van? Matt, you still got that gun I gave you two years ago when the kid was born? Yeah, it's in the office and the safe. You got any need for it? No. I want it back. I get this other saddle off. No, no, Matt, wait. I can go buy another gun. It's just that I'm used to that one. I carried it for years. And I got to have one tonight. You haven't worn a gun for two years now, Van. You told me when you gave it to me, you were through with gunfighting. I didn't ask for this. For the kid's sake and Edna's. So you told me. That's true, Matt. You said you only had one enemy in the world and you hadn't heard of him for years. What's the matter? Have you gone out and made yourself a new one? No. And it's the same one, huh? He's caught up with you? No, well, it was 12 years ago. Clear down in Durango. Fight over a girl. Nobody. She didn't even count. I just fought easy in them days was all. Yeah, sure. This fellow drawed on me and I put a bullet through his leg. He was still laid up with it when I rode out of town. And he swore he'd find me and kill me. I didn't pay it much mind. We all talk big when we're young, you know. I know. He rode in to Dodge today. He's been asking for me. Uh huh. What's his name? Largo Greeland. He's a big fella. He's built like a bull. Always wears two guns, and he can shoot with either hand. Van, does your shoulders still bother you, son? 
What's that got to do with it? Look, you might as well have given me that gun four years ago when that horse fell and rolled on him. Now, you get mixed up in something like this with that bad shoulder, and you'll be dead before you even get your gun clear of the leather. You must be out of your head. You think I want to meet Largo? You sure act like it. He's come after me. Twelve years he's been looking. That's a lot of hate, Matt. And if I don't call him here in town, he'll come on out to the ranch. I got Edna and the kid to think of. All right, then think of him. Stay out of this and leave it to me. You think I wouldn't like to? Matt, I'm scared. I know what I'm up against, and I'm scared to death. Then get out of town. Stay clear of him and let me handle it. It's not your fight, Matt. It might be. Well, ain't no use arguing about it. If it's all right with you, I'll take my gun and not bother you no more. Why don't you use your head, Van? You haven't got a chance. I want the gun, Matt. I want it now. All right. Come on. Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon? Get Van Tover's gun out of the safe, will you? Tighter than a two dollar cinch. You're waiting for something, aren't you? Uh, don't worry about it. No use borrowing trouble. If anybody's about to borrow from it's uh, you. Kitty, huh? will you excuse me for a minute? Uh, Look, you stay here and finish your drink. I uh I got something that needs attended to. I'll be back uh, in a little while. Okay, man. Your name Largo Greeland? Might be. What's on your mind, mister? Well, I'm the marshal here in Dodge. One of them, huh? Yeah. You, uh... Ever been on the Cherokee Strip, Margo? Oh, now I see. Van Tover come whining to you, I reckon. Got you to do his fighting for him, huh? I'm not talking about Tover. I'm talking about some wanted bulletins I've been looking over. Got your name and face on them. You don't see? One of them's for murder down on the Cherokee Strip. Man must have changed some. Spook's easier for one thing. Hollers for his hit. Forget about Van. That's kind of a hard thing to do, Marshal. When you've looked for a man 12 years and finally found him. Understand he's staked out over by the stock pins. Got covered the sides and behind. Sure looks like he ain't running no chances. <laughs> but I can wait. Let him sweat some. He can't stay there forever. You're under arrest for murder, Largo. Now, I'd like to blood you, Marshal. But I got other business in town. Not now, you haven't. Oh, I ain't gonna draw on you. More than likely, you got a man somewhere behind me. No, I ain't gonna draw on you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Largo, but I've had that kick and trick tried on me before. Now, get up on your feet. Now, come on, mister. We're going to jail. And 
Oh, God, man, I'm telling you. Someday you're going to take one chance too many. Oh, what do you mean, Doc? Trying to arrest somebody you know is a killer. With your gun in your holster. Doc, a lawman that went around with a pistol in his hand that lasted about a week. Why? Because every outlaw in town would figure he had a right to ambush him. Uh, Marshal! Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, you're in town kind of late, aren't you, Miss Tober? Marshal, where's Van? Oh, I don't know, around town somewhere, I guess. Now, Doc, you know Miss Tober, don't you? Oh, do I? And of course I know. Who do you think delivered that baby of hers? How are you, Edna? Marshal, who's Van going to fight? Fight? He's wearing a gun, first time in two years. And he's in town looking for somebody. He wouldn't tell me anything, but I know. I can feel it when a man's mind took up with killing. Easy now, Miss Tober. Whatever he might have been thinking, he can forget. And you can, too. There's nothing to worry about. That's easy to say. It happens to be true. The fellow he was worrying about's in jail. I guess Van doesn't know it yet. Are you telling me the truth, Marshal? Yes, I am. Now, why don't you get yourself back out to the ranch? That husband of yours is going to be tired and hungry when he finally rides in tonight. You're you sure this man's in jail, Marshal? Yeah, he's there, all right. Well, of course he's there. Now, you head for home, young lady, before you really give Van something to worry about. Gallivanting around alone this time of night? All right, Doc, I will. Good night. And good night, Marshal. Good night, Miss Tober. Uh... Blame fool woman worrying over nothing. Yeah, that's right, Doc. The same as you were. Same as I was. Oh, oh, you mean about you taking chances and all and... Oh, well, that's different now. Mr. Dillon? Ah, uh, that Chester. He can find more reasons to hoop and holler. Mr. Dillon. Yeah, what's the matter, Chester? He, he jumped me right there in the cell. I fetched him some water so he could clean up when he come to, and he was just playing possum. Are you hurt? Well, no, I ain't hurt. That ain't what I'm trying to tell you, Mr. Dillon. Well, what is it, then? He, he got away. <laughs> No, he sure didn't. Uh, Doc, uh, any sign of him around the railroad depot? No, not a whisper, man. Quiet as a tomb over there. And, and I didn't see Van Tover either. Yeah. Yeah, we got to find one of them before they find each other. Well, it's just possible that he pulled stakes and lit out, man. Not after 12 years looking for Tover, he's still around somewhere. Well, you had him locked up in jail. Oh, Mr. Dillon, I just don't know how it happened. He just fooled me, Lord. Ah, I guess you're probably thinking about women. They're always fooling you, too. Now, you look here, Doc. Forget it, it, Chester. We all get taken out once in a while. No, I just don't know how he tricked me like that. Well, never mind. It's done now. The thing to do is to find him. He hasn't had time to get very far. But you, Mr. Dillon. What? Uh, yeah, over here, Miles. I wonder what old Miles is doing out this time of night. Yeah, he's probably trying to peddle something, make another five cents profit so he can sleep better. I heard that, Doc. I heard what you were saying behind my back. Yeah, there isn't anything I wouldn't say to your front, you old skin flint. What's on your mind, Miles? Uh, Matthew, there's something mighty funny going on. How's that so? I just came past the livery stable. That Mrs. Tober started to drive out, and some fella jumped into the buggy with her. What? Mm-hmm. I hear it was a big fella, built like a bull. He made a turn around and go back into the stable. And it looks like we've found Largo. Come on, let's go. Well, he might have left. It's been five minutes since I saw him. If you saw them at all, you'd probably been nipping at that scotch whiskey of yours. One of these days, Doc, you'll go too far. Look up. 
Well, I, I guess he ain't left yet after all. Largo! Come on out of there with your hands up. <laughs> Me and the lady's too comfortable, Marshal. Why don't you come and join us? Let her come out alone and you won't get hurt. I don't see you to get hurt. That's why she's with me. Matt, what's going on? You got Largo cornered in there. I heard a shot. Go find her husband, Marshal. Tell him if he hurries, he might still be breathing. Marshal, no. Matt, that's Edna. Don't let that Largo's go. Largo's got Edna in there. That dirty. Wait a minute, man. It won't help her any to walk out there and get yourself killed. There's no use arguing, Matt. No, I guess you're right. There isn't any use arguing. Doc, take care of him, will you? Chester, get his gun. And see if you can hold Largo's attention. Fire a couple of shots. I'm going to try to slip in the back. Okay, Mr. Miller. Hey, let me have his gun, Doc. Uh, Largo, you ain't got a chance. Throw your gun out and walk out of there with your hands up for me and Mr. Dillon comes in after you. Come on, if you feel lucky. You think we don't mean business, Largo? Didn't you, any? You better be careful, boys. You're scaring the lady. <laughs> Me and Mr. Dillon will give you just two minutes before we rush you. You know where to find me. Come on, I'll pick you off one at a time. <laughs> right after I shoot the lady, of course. Please, let me go. I don't know who you are, but... Shut up before you get me mad. Don't move, Largo. Marshal. Well, sneaked in the back way, like any ordinary pool cat. Don't turn around, Largo. Just drop that gun. Sorry, Marshal. A man waits 12 years for something. It ain't easy for him to just give up and quit. You had all the chance you're going to get, Largo. You move that gun one inch toward Ms. Tober, and it's the last move you'll ever make. Has to be a last move sometime, Marshal. So I reckon it might as well be now.
Arlie Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Our thanks to TV Radio Mirror and to you, our listening audience, for selecting Gunsmoke as the best Western program on radio for the third consecutive year. We are also pleased and proud to announce that William Conrad was selected as the best Western star. The results of this annual poll appear in the current issue of TV Radio Mirror. Join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke.